Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Um, a listener sent me a um, an exchange from the uh, very well-known website called uh, Craigslist.org. Craigslist has been getting a lot of attention recently because it's huge. And it's one of these places where people exchange opinions about a variety of things. A lot of them have to do with relationships and sex. And it also includes a number of personal ads that people have placed. Here is a personal ad that somebody has placed on Craigslist and the response to it from another user. And I'll give you my response to it. It goes like this. Looking to end my wandering ways is the title. And then it goes, um, it's time to settle down. I've been aware that this time is upon me for at least a year. But it's now time for me to act on it. I'm looking to end the silly childhood life I've been living, find the man I want to spend the rest of my life with, and start a family. I'm looking for a mature, acting, intelligent, established gentleman. I want someone no older than 35. Someone who has their act together, has a good, stable job, a house, and a settled life. I myself am winding up my party years for good. I have a very good job now, have quit drinking and drugs, expect the same from you, and I'm ready to focus on building a life with a man I can love forever. Oh, yes, and because I know it's important, I'm a size 5, 5'7", five, green eyes, shoulder length, sandy blonde hair. My chest is on the larger size, surgically enhanced. Want to be honest about that. I have nice legs and I work out regularly so I'm in good shape. I can fill gym clothes just as nice as a formal gal. So send a picture, send a few words about yourself and let the dating begin. You must be dead serious about this. You won't be getting any sex till I'm sure you are someone I want to spend time with. We're talking date 9 or 10 at least. Maybe more. So don't bother if you're just looking for sex. I won't be worth your time. Thanks and love, gentlemen. I can't wait to hear from you. Here's a response to this ad. I gotta tell you. You really had me until you started laying out the terms for sex before you had even met the guy. This is exactly what is so screwed up with dating L.A. girls. They're wild and loose until they become aware that they're approaching 30. Get worried, get their crap together, and then punish the good guys that come along. I'm 33, tall, athletic, handsome, successful, sober, and have had my life together for many years, patiently waiting for that one special gap. Unlike most people in this town, I got the party out of my blood when I was a teenager. I just don't get how any woman expects any guy to fall in love with her and respect her if she shifts gears into the Virgin Mary in her late twenties. Don't get me wrong, I'm not looking for sex on the first or second date, although all of my long-term relationships began that way. But if you're not hot for me by the third date, then what makes me think you're going to be hot for me after the third year? Men are not looking to adopt an attractive woman uh, as she falls out of her prime to have an uh, at-home occasional lover. We want passion, a total mind, body, and soul connection with one amazing woman. If a woman doesn't feel it after a few dates, that's a problem. If she feels it and doesn't act on it, that's a problem, too. Sorry for the rant, but I'm sick of that mentality. It's totally screwed up. That's the response. And now here is my response. This is something we talk about on the air a lot. The woman who has had sex with anybody and everybody. The ski instructor, the scuba instructor, the musicians, the poets, the bodybuilders, the pizza guy, the pool guy, the occasional celebrity, the actor, the Hall of Fame ball player, whatever. Uh, they have partied, they have done every drug, they have stayed up all night, they've had really good times with everybody else. Then they come to that day when they're 27, 28, 30, whatever it is, and they say, oh, my God, I better find somebody. And so what they do is, as the response to this ad indicates, suddenly they decide that now they're not going to put out. Now they're not going to be easy. Now they're not going to party or have any more fun. It's over. 
Now, what makes a woman like this think that a stable, dare I say, boring guy who has his crap together, owns a house, saved and invested his money, what makes her think that we are sitting around here twiddling our thumbs, waiting for her to finally be over the hill? This is somebody who is over the hill. How insulting is that? Think about this for a second. And I, I've talked about Poindexter on our show before. He's not one person. He's many. Poindexter, who, um, while this girl was out partying and doing drugs and whatever she was doing over the years and gang-banging football teams or whatever, Poindexter was showing up at the IT department every day. He joined the 401k plan at work. He has an IRA. Poindexter saves money, and since no girl will go out with him, he doesn't waste money on dinners or drinks or dates. He puts his money into computer equipment or the stock market, saves and invests, probably uh, saves his frequent flyer miles and cuts coupons out of the newspaper, and generally lives a fairly decent life, and every once in a while, some girl will do him a favor and let him buy dinner for her, and then never put out. And... Um, Amazingly, after Poindexter sits home while this girl is out partying, suddenly one day she's done partying and now she's ready for Poindexter. And even then, she's not going to have sex with him until date 9 or 10, to hear her say it. How outrageous is that? The fact is, when Poindexter turns 35 and he's got all that money saved and he's got a house and he's been investing all these years, Poindexter doesn't need the over-the-hill chick. If Poindexter has any brains at all, He'll go after the 18 and 19 year olds who are still partying. Because finally now, Poindexter's got the money and the position uh, to get chicks. To get the hot chicks he could never get before. How outrageous is this? I really have a problem with this. You know, I have met women like this who, um, I don't know why they would think that I would be the one. But I have met women like this who had all the fun in the past. They had sex in dangerous places. They did things in all the weird positions. They had the threesomes and the foursomes and the fivesomes. They did all the drugs. They did all the partying. They traveled around the world and stuff like that. And then one day they decide they're ready to settle down and become boring housewives. And I would be the perfect partner for this. What makes you think that now that you are ready to settle down, I want to be with somebody like you today? Frankly, I'd rather have driven this BMW when it was a new one, not a used one. After everyone else has gotten a chance to drive it, I don't want to drive it. After everyone else has had fun with it, I don't want it. I don't take other people's leftovers. I don't want something out of the recycle bin. What makes women like this think that, like, you know, Poindexter was sitting home all these years. You wouldn't go out with him for all those years, and suddenly he's interesting to you. Because now you want somebody who'll show up at uh, dinner time. You want somebody you'll know where he is at all times. Somebody you can basically uh, 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 dictate his life to him. That's what you want. Why should any man answer to this? I, I'll bet we've got men out there right now with chicks who in the past were really hot, real partiers. They did anybody and everybody. They they had every good time they could possibly have. They spent every penny. Chicks do not generally save and invest. That's why uh, these financial companies spend all this money on commercials trying to convince women to invest money. Like they have any idea why you would invest money or how or what. They, they don't know. They don't care. They spend. Women spend on clothes. They spend on vacations. They take trips. Most women I've gone out with have done much more traveling than I have. Now, I'm no Poindexter, but I must be honest with you. Over the years of becoming a multimillionaire, and I'm not joking about that, I'm a multimillionaire. I, I'm a self-made multimillionaire. And to become one, coming from the background I did, I had to work very hard. I had to travel. I had to live far away from home. And eventually, uh, my home changed. I didn't even live in the same city anymore. I lived 3,000 miles from where I grew up. I had to live in eight different cities. It was very hard on me. It was very hard on relationships. I spent a lot of time alone. A lot. And I put a lot of money away. I saved and invested. And I didn't make all that money in the radio business. A lot of it I made from investments. So now um, I meet women. I must tell you, over the years, I meet women who uh, 
They've been to all these countries I've never been to. They've taken all these trips. They've had experiences I've never had. And, uh, oh, yeah, now that they've had all their fun, they'd love to settle down with me. They'd love to settle down with me. Why would I want? Why would I want to settle down with you? You know what? All these years I've been saving and investing, I would want to be with somebody I could have that fun with today. And you know what? There are girls who are in the fun-loving age who love being with multimillionaires and hanging around and getting uh, front-row seats for concerts and other events and traveling. It, why would I want to be with the chick who now wants to settle down and start reaching into my bank account? Does this make sense to you? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I watch the show, but I don't agree with everything, and I just want. But to... you can't stop listening. Like a bad car wreck, all of a sudden you 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 see one, you, you stop on the highway. Oh wait! Oh no! Oh God! Oh the humanity! Oh. Jesus. It's the Tom Like His Show. It's the Tom Like His Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm okay. Good. Hey, I had to call in on this subject. It really touches close to home. I'm 28 now. I've made probably about a million now in real estate. I've started my own business. And these women around here in Salem, man, they're just nuts. Every time I turn around, they're trying to get my money, wanting me to settle down with them, wanting me to marry them. And it's like you said, I don't want an old BMW, man. I'm, I'm going to drive some fresh stuff. I want a 20, 21-year-old woman I can teach to be my own. Yeah, and, and one who's still ready to party, not the one who's ready to settle down. Exactly, exactly. Wheels greased, ears turned, I got the pistol grips on them. Yeah, that's that's the way you want to go. Uh, isn't that outrageous? All the years you worked and sacrificed and um, probably didn't get as much tail as you'd like to because you were busy or running around or whatever. And uh, also the women who wouldn't go out with you because you didn't make enough money or because you weren't settled yet or you didn't have uh, you didn't have it together. Now that you got it together, the same chicks, they're now older. Now they want you. It's funny, Tom. You know, I was thinking back about this, and I had this woman that I dated in, in high school. Not a woman, but a girl in high school I dated with. She didn't want nothing to do with me because I was a loser into the books and everything. Now that I've gotten money, she sees where I'm at. And I didn't party. I didn't have time to do crap when I was younger. You know, I was too busy mm -hmm. making money. But now she sees where I'm at. She wants to be with me, and she wouldn't give me the time of day before. But now she's all over me. I'm telling you, all the guys out there, don't spend any money on these tramps. Save your money for yourself. That's party right. when you're older. That's Tom, right. Take me out with a big bong rip, bro. Here you go. <laughs> I, I got to confess something to you. I, I This topic is very emotional for me. Uh, I'm not uh, kidding about this. You don't know how angry I get. Because, uh, you see, you know what I gave up over the years? Being in the radio business, getting laid was never a problem. Finding chicks was not a problem. But one thing I had to give up over the years is travel. I've done a lot of traveling in connection with the show. But, um, you know, during the years when um, every woman I uh, have ever met uh, was going to Cabo or going to Europe with their friends or uh, going to Australia or African safaris or whatever. You know what? I was in places like Albany, New York and Stanton, Virginia and Phoenix, Arizona doing a radio show, working six days a week in most cases. Uh, not being able to take time off because you never knew you might take time off and come back find you'd been replaced. So there were many times you were afraid to even leave town. You would stay there. There's an old episode of the Mary Tyler Moore Show where Ted Baxter wouldn't take a vacation for years, the anchor man, And they finally forced him to take a vacation, and he starts sending postcards from what was supposed to be Mexico, but in reality, they were postmarked from his home. <laughs> he was sitting at home because he was afraid that whoever filled in for him would do a better job than he did. You know what? I relate to that. I do. And all those years that I sacrificed in order to become who I am, now I want to travel. 
And over the years, I've known many women who have done a lot more traveling than I have because they spent everything they ever had. Or guys paid their way going everywhere they ever went. And I've had chicks, you know, I've actually said, hey, let's go to, I don't know, name a country, Spain. And I've had chicks say things to me like, yeah, you wouldn't like Spain. I've been there. You wouldn't like it. And then they can't understand why I get so angry when they say that. I have said to more than one woman, you know what? I want to find out that I hate Spain on my own. I don't need your help. If you don't want to go to Spain because you're bored with it and you didn't like it, how about I'll go by myself? I don't need you telling me where to go on vacation. I have had women actually tell me, well, no, let's go to Greece. Let's go to you know, start naming other places they'd rather go other than the places that I've always wanted to go and never been. I had to sacrifice a lot. And uh, so I completely relate to Poindexter and all these guys who worked hard over the years to become really financially successful. And then you get these chicks who say, you know, now I'm ready to settle down and start spending your money. And I'm not going to do any of the outrageous, kinky things I did in the past. There'll be no more partying either. And uh, to prove I'm serious, uh, I'm not going to have sex with you on the first ten dates. It's like, you know what? Screw you. I'll find chicks who are not ready to settle down. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Gotti on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, it's a pleasure talking to you, man. Thank you. I, I've been traveling like first time, long time. I was talking to Dean. He's a great guy. Uh, you're right on the money about every single thing you say. I, my, my background is like I'm establishing myself. I'm working really, really hard like in sales. i I could not agree more than you. I mean, you're you're absolutely a god. You're. I thank you for the public service you bring to us. I I'm not spending more than three days. You know, like not waiting for anybody. There's enough to pick up. So good for you. Keep up, keep up the good work. You know, we're following you. And anybody that tries to say that you're not wrong is just like hates to hear the truth in the face. Well, you are right about that. No doubt about that, Gotti. Thank you for the call. Our toll-free telephone number here is 1-800-5800-TOM. God damn, this subject pisses me off. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. From Seattle at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Rebecca on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, what's happening? Uh, it's doing a radio show here, dear. Okay, obviously, because I'm on it. Um, I just wanted to let you know that going about earning your money, you must have been doing it the completely wrong way. I'm only. Why, do you, why do you say that? Well, because I'm only 19, and yes, I am fresh out of high school, but I already have three thousand dollars saved up that I had to work for. So what? So, I'm. Uh, already investing in uh, mutual funds and talking to bankers about other sorts of investments. I well, that's, that's wonderful, dear, but uh, so what? What does that prove? Well, obviously you're not sitting, going with the right girls because obviously there are some that have heads on their shoulders that can invest money. Yeah, but generally those are the unattractive ones. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know you always say that and you hear people call in being like, oh, I'm hot and blah, blah, blah. I don't yeah. think I'm extremely attractive. But that's uh, you making my point for me. I'd say I'm maybe an L.A. 7 to 8. All right, but you know what? Extremely attractive chicks do not save or invest because they always know another guy will come along and pay their bills. Okay. but In fact, it's a good idea for women who are not 9s and 10s uh, to learn about saving and investing because what guy will pay your bills? Well, I have had offers for men to pay my bills, but I don't want to. I'm not kidding. I've had at least three people propose to me. They well, want me You to understand me. that, that uh, most women uh, do operate this way. They do not save. They spend. It's a known fact. Oh, yeah. Women, women spend 70% of the money spent in America. That's a fact. Well, I didn't know it was that much, but I know women It's spend that a much. Lot. Women spend, men save. How many times do you know a woman who uh, reads the Wall Street Journal? Honestly, I can't say I've ever met one. Right. That's my point, dear. It's for men. Men care about that stuff, not women. How, many, how often do you see a woman reading Business Week or Fortune or Forbes? 
No, I can't say I've ever met one. Well, that's my point, dear. The reason is because investing is something men do, not women. Okay. Women spend. Men save and invest. So in the uh, single years when a woman is out uh, having a good time, she spends on clothes, she spends on shoes, she spends on accessories, she spends on cosmetics, she spends on trips to Cabo or trips to Europe or whatever. And while the men have to go to school and save and invest and pay off student loans. And then these chicks later on, uh, when the guy has finally gotten his act together, says, now I'm ready to settle down. What that really means is, now uh, I'm ready to have kids and have you pay my bills. Now that I've had all my fun. And by the way, you won't be having any fun with me because I already had my fun. They use phrases like that, and it's insulting. Oh, Tom, I, I totally agree that women are complete idiots. Okay, I agree that they're manipulative. I don't think I could say that word, though. <laughs> um... Dogs. And, dogs. I mean, I'm saying that I agree with you, but not everybody has to not party while they're young and not save money. You know what I mean? Like, I'm talking about, you're talking how guys always have to go to school and save and such, so on and so forth, and they miss out right. on all those party years. Right. Well, I'm saving, and I'm still partying. And I'm saying that not Again, everybody has... Again, the fact that there are exceptions to the rule does not prove that the rule is wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong for women. Okay, honestly, I grew up as a tomboy most of my life. Uh-huh. No <laughs> wonder I... you're investing. <laughs> yeah. I try not to associate myself with women. <laughs> In fact, mm -hmm. there's only probably three girls I ever talk to. And most of my friends are guys. And, I mean... Obviously, they all love to hang out with me, but so I look at it from a guy's point of view. You can still make money and save money and party. You can, but most women don't. Right? Tom, I said I was trying to talk from a guy's point of view here. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, still, so, right. it doesn't matter whose point of view you're speaking from. That's women true. don't. Women, 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 don't. women don't. And by the way, most of the guys who party heavily uh, generally can't show up at work in the morning without a hangover and do not produce as much as guys who don't. That is probably true. Believe but me. Then I, I, I talk to these guys right. all the time. <laughs> then they're obviously not partying right, Tom. <laughs> uh, they're not partying right. Okay. Well, thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. You should be partying right, for God's sake. Hey. Hey. Tom like his show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Tina on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tina. How are you? Do yes, you care? care? I'm doing great. <laughs> yes, I care. Well, the reason I called you... Are you there? No, I left the room. <laughs> the reason I called you is because I can't believe that there are women that do not want to travel with you. I just can't believe it. You can't believe... Well, I never said they don't want to travel with me. What I said was that I had women who actually, when I would say, I, let's go to Spain, they'd be like, ah... I've already been to Spain. You don't want to see that. Then well, start telling me I... where I should go to the places that they haven't been or places they've been in the past that they particularly liked, which were never necessarily my places that I dreamed of going when I was busy sacrificing. Well, what I'm saying is I can't believe that there are women who would, even if they've been to Spain, that would suggest they didn't want to go to Spain with you, even if they had a lot of... Well, no, they would try to talk me into doing something else. Oh, now, well... Now, by the way, like... they would ultimately go to Spain if I really wanted them to, but the minute they start with that crap, I lose interest. I'm like, uh, I'm out. Well, I would say that's not being very considerate to say, no, let's go where I want to go. I'm telling Some you... that is. I'm telling you, that's what I they do. I, I told your screener, I said, I can't believe that there are women that do not want to travel with you. I would go to Reseda, California with you. Yes. Really? Is that so? 
<laughs> Ever been to Reseda? <laughs> I'm kind of close to there now, as a matter oh, of fact. Oh, there we go. Well, I don't live too far from there. There we go. Okay. But I just, no, I, that's what I, I had to call in because I just couldn't believe that there would be women that would refuse. Well, whatever. They want, don't or, refuse. They okay. just, they, tr they tell me, oh, yo, you won't enjoy Spain. Uh, I've been there. I've been to uh, Toledo. I've been to the Basque provinces. I've been to Madrid. I've been to Barcelona. Oh, God. I, I was at the running of the bulls in Pamplona. Oh, so crowded. God, you don't want to go there. Well, they say things be, like that. You can, that would I'm be the first you. clue to dump now, Here's the thing. I have, I have spent years sacrificing so I could have money and have a successful career. And now I'm ready to do some traveling, and I have run into women over the years who, who, who've done all their traveling already. Or they've been to all the places they dreamed of going. And so now, you know what? I have never been to Italy. Never. Neither but have I. I. But and you know I'm what? You know what I dread? You. I, you know what I dread? I go to Italy with a girl, with a girl who says to me, uh, well, you know what? I think you, you don't want to go to Florence. You want to go to Rome. And starts like editing my trip, telling me what I will and won't like. Well, that bitch would be right out the door. They do it all the time. I'm not kidding. I, I just can't believe you can't find... It wouldn't be someone that would be so thrilled to go anywhere with you. There, there are, there are women who would be thrilled. I'm not saying they're all like that. I'm just saying you'd be surprised how many of these girls did all this traveling and partying and money spending over the years. And me, I was saving and investing over all those years. And now that I'm ready to travel, these are the chicks who say, Oh, come on. You don't want to go to Iceland. You want to go to Greenland. I mean, this is the kind of thing they do. Well, all I got to say is... If these are the girls, if any of these girls say this to you, they're not the girl for you. Well, you're probably right about that. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Jeff on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? All right, Jeff. Hey, I, uh, I am the point dexter for whom you speak of. Really? Yeah. I'm uh, 28 years old. I had the 401k, the IRA going, and I'm a virgin. Oh, my God, really? Yeah. Not to say that I haven't gone out on dates, I have, and exactly you are correct with what goes on. I've gone in for the goodnight kiss, they pull away. Right. But they didn't mind the lamb chops or the Chateaubriand. That was fine. Of course not. They, they loved the food. Of yeah. course, because I paid. Right. And uh, oh. I would be willing to bet that at least once, if not more than once, that cell phone rang in the middle of the date and they took the call. You know, it's only happened to me once. And, uh, yeah, she, she bolted. Yep. So, you know, so, so I, I tried to take out my, uh, my, the, the younger girls that I, that I was dating, went for the older ones with the kids, you know, the ones that you'd think would put out. Uh -huh. No. No. Uh huh. It was horrible. Yeah. So, uh, I just figured, you know what? By the time I hit 35 or so, I'll be okay with the, uh, with my investments and, I'll be doing exactly what you said. That's right. That's don't right. don't uh, don't jump at the first chick who, who is nice to you. Oh, uh, I don't know. If, if you hang in there, Poindexter, ultimately, uh, when you got your uh, crap together, when you got your investments together, when you're making good money and your career is uh, uh, the, the off and running and everything, the 21 year olds will want you. Oh yeah, and that's you know I, I figured that. I was just you know it's one of those things where it's. You're so anxious to get out there and, you know, get what everybody mm -hmm. else is getting. That's right. So, you know, it's, it's that waiting game that, that's the tough one. Yeah. I understand hey. that. I understand that you just have to be patient. It's all you have to do. Ernie, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tommy. How you doing? I'm doing okay, Ernie. Hey, it's just some point, Dexter. <laughs> oh, you guys are talking about me on the radio. Oh, it's another point, Dexter. Oh, man, if you only knew, dude. And I finally got her. Revenge. Revenge. How so? My turn. What happened? It's my turn. Oh, this, man, when I was younger, I used to live in this house with my brother-in-law, and his sister-in-law moved in. Man, she was hot. She uh -huh. was smoking. Everybody was tagging it except for me. And guess what? Her next what? just hooked me up with her the other day. I've been taking, I've been going out with her. 
work. Uh, I think tomorrow's gonna be our second date. I'll uh, be our third date, and um, I had her last night, and I got her all I kicked her out. <laughs> <laughs> and she called me all day, wanting to hook up. Oh, I'm like, yeah. all right, all right. I just stopped off my Harley at the dealer. I'm getting it. I'm getting some white walls. I'm gonna take her out for one last romp and see what happens. Oh, there you go. You know, so I'm like, I, I'm in shock. I'm like, and she's she's a little older now, two kids, but I mean, she's still smoking, man. I still spank that ass, that ass, that ass, that ass. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> God bless you, and uh, hopefully you guys can have another topic like this, because man, I listen to you every day. I love it, Ernie. Thanks for the call. One, eight. Uh, the more money you make, the more power you have. The more power you have, the more money you have. The more money you have, the more power you have. The more money and power you have, the more poon you can consume. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Yenny on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes. Yes. Is Yenny? Yes. Oh. Okay, yes, I am the, uh, I don't think I should say that word, that female, that kind of type of female you're talking about. And you are. I didn't realize that. Well, my friend would keep telling me, but I didn't realize that until I actually listened to you. And wow, what was wrong with me? Oh. And I just broke up with my, the boyfriend, um, of course, the typical guy you were talking about also, because he was too corny. Uh-huh. Right, but uh, later on, you'll want somebody who's uh, boring and asexual and will settle down and impregnate you and pay for everything. Well, he, yeah, he was willing to pay for everything. Well, he, he was paying everything. And, and he was willing to, well, he waited for me for a whole year while, while, I, was a, while I was in Iraq serving the country. And I don't know, it was just, yeah, it was just, I don't know why I put all the profile. It just, um, yeah, we went to vacation. Of course, he paid for it. And, well, of course, I'll, I'll just, I think I'll accept the fact that I will die alone and have 20 cats live with me. And, okay. Because what you really want is not a relationship. You don't want a relationship. Maybe not. You just want guys to pay for things. Uh, okay. <laughs> and you want to have sex. Well, yeah, that comes with it. Right. But that's really all you need a guy for. Hmm. Huh? Well, yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, my friends, I'll just be alone forever. And never find the right guy. And, of course, I'll never a guy can put up with my controlling uh, personality. Oh, and so you're a bitch. That's the yes. word you were looking for. Yes. But, oh, well, I can say it on mine now? I don't know. Listen, go ahead and say say it. Yes, I'm a bitch. I'm the bitch you've been talking about. The, I'm the, the bitch you've who... been talking about. Sounds like a song title. Yeah. And I don't know, the guy couldn't, couldn't leave me alone. Did you tell him, hey, don't mess with a bitch? Yes, I told him. The guy just like keep coming. And I'm the bitch. I'll be doing whatever I want. If you can't handle it, just leave. Finally, this guy left because he couldn't handle it. You should have just taken advantage of it. Just just uh, nailed you a few times and uh, gotten out. Hit it and quit it. Yeah, obviously. That's right. Because I know my boys here at the uh, studio, you know what they do. They'd, they'd come right over there and service you. They, would, they wouldn't even tell you their last names. Yeah. Uh, uh, they would I just know. do you. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't mind. I do what I want, too. That's all it's good. Listen to you. I know how to take care of a bitch like you. Oh, no. You know how to take care of a bitch like you? I With an open hand. I just give you a little crack on the ass there, baby. Sure you. I bet you have enough experience with that. I, you'd love to know, wouldn't you? Yeah. But no. I don't want to know. Oh, come on. The Tom Likas Show.